Okay, in this video, we're going to be discussing the item editor. Now, I'm just going to give myself a stick so that way I can access to it. Uh, of course, you can't edit an item without an item uh, to edit. And as I hover over here, you can see that you can edit the display name as well as it's giving you context as to what you want to use. If you want to rename, uh, you know, with a different color or a different format. So here, let's say that I want to change it to dark red. Uh, I'm going to uh, type in that ampersand symbol and then I'll type in dark red. <clears throat> so what you see here is I've renamed this stick to dark red and I can edit the custom model data, which, you know, if you have a texture pack you can use, but uh, for now it doesn't do anything. Uh, you can also set the durability. Stick doesn't have any durability, so of course, you know, there's no durability to count. Um, you also have the, you can set the repair cost if you had like a really high enchanted item. Uh, you can also set something to unbreakable. Of course, this doesn't have any durability, so it wouldn't do anything. You can also set the lower, um, and then it separates the lines by that. So if, say, for example, one, and then I put two peri uh, commas, and then um, uh, space, and then the second line, and then I'll do the third line. So as you can see now, uh, as I hover over the lore, you can see there's three lines. So let's clear the lore, okay? And then we'll add one, uh, one line, two line, and three line, okay? So then you can also use the, um, what do you call it? The uh, color codes here. So I edit the line here. I want to edit line two, and the new lore will be, um, let's see, four dark red. And as you can see, I've edited the lore there. And I can also remove the lines as well. So if I remove line two, you can see that, you know, it moves everything up. Okay, so generate lore will generate plugin related lore for you. Um, the stick doesn't have anything, you know, special about it on the lore. So we'll come back to this later. Um, you can also see that these are the item flags. You can hide attributes, you can hide the armor trim, destroys, that's for like an adventurous stuff. Uh, dies, unbreakable, uh, potion effects placed on enchants. So all of the, uh, you know, item flag toggles there. So over here in this corner, you'll have access to different menus. Uh, Minecraft attributes. Uh, you can see that when I click on that, it shows me all of these slots. And as I change the slot by clicking on it, you see attributes head, chest, blah, blah, blah. By default, it's hand. So when this is in my hand, I want to modify what type of uh, statistic this gives me. So let's say I want to modify my movement speed because it is the easiest one to uh, see the difference of. Uh, you can see that the base value for movement speed is 0 0.1. So if I put 0 0.1, I'd be effectively doubling my attack, uh, movement speed when this is in my hand. And as you can see, when in main hand, plus one speed. Okay. And of course, vice versa, if I had like 0 0.01, then that's only 10% increase. And it's not that noticeable. But you can see uh, just, you know, how many options you have uh, given the slots as well as the type of attributes you can modify. To remove attributes, just type a minus. Make sure that you also match the slot that it's in. Because if I say, for example, I wanted to set this to my hand and then I set this to head and I minused it, obviously there's nothing on the head for the movement speed, so it's not going to set anything. But okay, you see the point there. Okay, so for Aethel attributes, we can modify the same thing, but except now you have RPG slots to, uh, to consider. You can have necklace and ring stats as well and you would put them appropriately in the you know correct equipment slot uh, from character uh, we have critical chance damage max health uh, dodge blah 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 um, you can figure out on your own uh, you know you can play around with the the tools and see what they do but for the sake of this example I was discussing uh, max health in like the uh, another video and you can see that I'm going to give this 100 max health, uh, plug-in health, of course, to my stick when I'm holding it. 
Now, of course, no changes are done to the item until you refresh it. And the way to refresh it is just hover over it and then mouse back. So you can see now I have effectively 120 health. And this health is, um, you know, effective health. Um, it's not just for show. And when I come back to survival, you can see that it scales with the amount of health, current health to max health that I have. So say for example, if I were to summon a, uh, let's say a guardian, and it hits me. Um, probably should have summoned this in the, uh, in the water. Okay. So I should probably be taking about like six damage, yeah, six damage. But you see that even though I took like six damage, it scales the amount of health of the maiden. So I'm going to get rid of this guardian real quick. Okay. So, alright, so we see what the basis of those uh, Aethel, you know, attributes can do. Uh, you know, enchantments, self-explanatory, it's all ordered by alphabetical order. Potion effects, obviously you can't put any potion effects on a stick. But if I were to say, um, give myself a, a potion, and that can be lingering or splash potion, you see that this is an uncraftable potion, I can't do anything with that. Until I go to the potion effects, and then suddenly, now you can give any um, type of potion effect that you want. Let's say I want to make give myself um, Hero of the Village, so I, it needs a duration. Now, duration is in ticks, so remember that one second is 20 ticks, so if however many seconds you want, just multiply that by 20. I want this for 30 seconds, so 30 times 20 is 600. Uh, I want Hero of the Village 5, so I'll put an amplifier 4, and ambient is a true or false statement, so I don't want this to show, so I'll just put false. And now you can see that I have Hero of the Village 5, and then I can also set a color. So set the RGB value. Let's do uh, 128, 128, 128. And I change the color here. When I drink it, I'll have Hero of the Village 5. Cool, huh? Okay, so let's go back to this menu. So now we have passive abilities. Um, I'll show you, like... I'll, I'll go through a few of them, but I'm not going to show all of them on screen. Uh, bleed is a damage over time status. You hit something with it, it starts bleeding, it takes damage over time. Okay. Brittle is... doesn't do anything on its own. Think of it like freezing something. Um, <clears throat> when you freeze something, it gets really hard, and then it gets really easy to shatter. So you'll want to you combine this with an active ability called Shatter, to consume all of the stacks of brittle on an entity to deal a massive amount of damage all at once. This is really good against like hardy, tough foes who have like a lot of armor and you know multiple attacks get mitigated uh, really low damage. So obviously if you do high amount of burst damage then it gets through their armor, block, etc. Electrocute is just like bleed except um, it has a secondary feature. When the entity dies with Electrocute, all of its remaining stacks will spread to nearby entities. So say, for example, if you had 100 Electrocute stacks and an entity dies with it, and there's like, I don't know, five rabbits around, each of the rabbits will get 20 Electrocute stacks. And then if they die, then the process repeats until there's no more remaining electrocute stacks. Of course, it dies over time as it's being used. Um, so yeah, uh, Fracture will basically reduce the amount of effective armor in any calculation. So let's say that someone has 20 armor. If they have 10 stacks of Fracture, anytime um, an armor calculation is done, they will only have 10 armor in that calculation. So it's basically increasing the amount of damage that they take as well. And um, Fracture can make your armor go below zero, which increases the amount of damage you take uh, as well. Uh, potion effect is pretty self-explanatory. 
um, if you want to give yourself a potion effect when you hit something, um, you see that here there's ability values. Uh, what is the chance? I want to say every time I hit something, I get 100%. Uh, I, I get, uh, there, there's, every time I hit something, okay, uh, with no cooldown in between, uh, I want it to apply to myself, so I'll put true, and if I don't want it to, then I'll put false. And what kind of potion effect do I want? Let's say I want to do strength. Uh, five strength. So I will do four amplifier. For three seconds. So I'll do three times 20. And ambient. Do I want it hidden or not? I do want it hidden. So I'll put true. So let's say I'll give myself a villager. <clears throat> ah. Okay. So you'll, ah. you'll have to remember that when you hit uh, update an item, you'll have to scroll back over it to it. And optionally, you can also do ah. generate lore for it because this is a custom now. So now you can see when in the main hand, I have 100 max health and then I have passives gain ah. strength after hitting something. Damage dealt, gain strength 5 self for 3 seconds. And I hit this and I'll gain strength 5 for 3 seconds. Okay, so let's go back here. Ah. Soaked. Okay, he's, a, he's being a little loud, so uh, ah. we'll deal with him. Ah. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. Uh, we have soaked. Soaked doesn't do anything on its own, but what it does is allow you to chain damage from another passive uh, called Spark. So if you had 10 enemies with soaked and they were all in a line, or away from each other, but you wanted to uh, attack them all at once, then you would use Spark. So you have to combine these two passives together to create a like chain reaction. And of course, if one soaked enemy is right next to each other, it'll jump to each other, kind of like lightning. So th these are what these two do. They don't do anything by themselves, and you can stack soaked uh the more amounts of soaked an enemy has the more chain damage they'll take as like a multiplier <clears throat> so one amount of soaked just to start the chain reaction and then as you increase the amount of soaked the more chain damage they'll do and then spark is the um i guess like starting uh like like the the enabler so that way you can chain damage or, or vice versa. This is the enabler, and this is what causes it. Vulnerable is, you know, a very boring yet essential um, passive ability. It increases all the damage taken by the entity. Uh, we're not going to go into percentages because, well, you're not here for that, but that's what it does. It just increases the flat amount of damage you... Well, not flat, uh, percentage of all the damage you take at the end. So it's not at the beginning, it's uh, at the end. So after you've, you know, calculated all the crit and everything, this will multiply that on top of that. So it's pretty powerful. Okay, so let's go to active abilities. There's quite a few active abilities to go through. Blink is a teleport forward. Um, it's omnidirectional, you can decide where you want to. You can aim it and then, you know, you crouch and use it. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to use it now. So you'll see that... It's asking me for the ability values. I don't want any cooldown. And let's say that I teleport forward four blocks. So set hand blink and remember to refresh. And because you remember that I had set my hotbar slots from a previous video, I am able to use this uh, hand ability in any slot. Uh, that is one, two, three. But as soon as I move it to four, it's not set. So, of course, this prevents, you know, um, th th this prevents, like, you from activating the abilities on accident or whatsoever. So, you know, customize your hotbars as you wish. And you can see Blink here is pretty uh, useful. And the teleport abilities, uh, I should mention, don't go through Bedrock or Barrier. So, that's the only limitations. And, of course, if there's a block in front of it, it'll stop at the... Um, closest block. Pretty useful. <clears throat> um, let's see. So here's a dash. 
Dash is forward facing. You can't aim with this one. It just goes forward. Um, and all the movement type abilities will scale with your movement speed. So let's get rid of this blink. And then we'll put a dash on it. And I don't want to... Let's say I want to put a modifier of... Let's start off with zero. Okay. So you can see... Uh, refresh that. You can see that I move forward. And when I give myself speed, you'll notice that... Um, let's see. For 10 seconds, let's say five modifier. You'll see that I move a lot further along. So you can see that the abilities, the movement type abilities, scale with your speed. Uh, dismiss is basically a removal for, of all of your non-damaging statuses. Um, you know, it's not as flashy as the other ones, but it is not needed in this system. And disregard is uh, a removal of all the damaging statuses, like bleed and electrocute. So you would use dismiss on like soaked, uh, vulnerable, fracture, and then you would use disregard on like electrocute and bleed. You know, you get the point. <clears throat> Explode. Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to aim with this thing. Um, you set a you set a range. You set the damage. Uh, it's basically a big sphere around you uh, that damages people uh, through walls, of course. Um, we'll fix that later. But for now, during the beta, well, you know, it's, it's that's it. It's how it is. Uh, leap. You can aim with this. This is a arc. You can jump, basically. Leap forward. Potion effect, uh, it's on demand it, rather than like as a passive this time. So, you know, you, you're pretty familiar with that now. Projection will allow you to teleport to a spot and then after a certain delay that you input. Uh, of course, remember that it's in, um, it's in ticks and not seconds. So multiply the amount of seconds you want to return after by 20. Uh, you'll teleport to a location uh, to some, from some distance and then you'll come back to it after a delay. Now it seems very simple, but you can, you know, use this for dece like deceiving enemies. You can use it for deceiving friends. You can go use it to go check like a random chest in your chest in your house. It's pretty good. I like it. Uh, Quake is like explode, except it's basically a um, it's a ring around you. So it's more like a circle on the ground that doesn't have so much verticality to it. So just think of like a big stomp. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll still have like the range of the big stomp to like maybe like one block, um, like maybe one block up and then one block down, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect like things in the air. Unless you jump up to it, then use it, then yeah, you're good. Uh, shatter is the way to proc all of the brittle stacks. Uh, from you know the passive ability and like I said it'll basically do massive damage if you have a lot of brittle stacks on the targets that you're um, using it on spring is basically a double jump you want to use it like that sure and remember that these movement speed abilities uh, these movement type abilities like spring dash and uh, leap they all scale with your movement speed so you want to drink like potions of a uh, you know you want to build like some type of fast character, you'll be super agile. You want to like drink potions of speed, you'll be very, very, you know, you'll, you'll get along around a lot faster too. Force sweep, um, how do I explain this? So it's like a triangle uh, in front of you. So uh, say for example, uh, let me give myself like some armor stands. So this is the shape that it takes. Basically, I cast it and all of these armor stands in front of me at like a 45 degree angle coming from me will take damage and then it'll travel out further on the distance. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's see. And then Force Wave is the... Um, it's like kind of like a beam. That's the best way I can explain it. So instead of an arc this time, it's just straightforward. And it's a little more narrow, but it does allow you to aim like omnidirectionally. Uh, the wave is, you know, 
directly in front of you and it doesn't have a lot of verticality to it and you can't like aim it so even if i jumped up in the air it would still like be at my feet to like you know do the arc but uh with the force wave i can shoot something up here now i really like the ability so i'm going to go ahead and use it now this is a bit of favoritism but i worked hard on it so i think i should be able to uh play around with it a little bit i'll put a set cooldown of uh zero uh I'll do 50 damage and then i'll say i'll do modestly like maybe eight uh meters um let's see and then i'll generate the lore and uh let's go into creative and put down some uh i don't know let's see well that's good what's good actually let's do some target practice now this is this is definitely favoritism uh, i'm getting giddy about this just to show this off, but you know, I mean, I, I mean, you'll get to play around with it too. It's just uh, now you get to get cucked because uh, I get to play around with it. Too. So boohoo. Okay, so force wave. Remember what it does? Boom! 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 <laughs> like fish in a barrel. All right. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, withdraw is basically another movement ability. And, uh, yeah, we'll show it off. This one's for Augury. Oh, it, it, it's really all for Augury. I, you'll, you'll see when it does. Well, you'll see when it happens. Uh, we'll do, uh, 25% modifier. Alright, I wonder what Withdraw does. Pretty useful for, like, archers. And, like, you know, getting away from places. You can also, like, use it as, like, a backwards dash. But, you know, it's, it's, it's... it's you either use the dash and then turn around and then do that, or you want to use the withdrawal and already like keep your uh, angle. So pretty good. And of course, if you wanted to bridge a gap, it would do it like in fancy style. Then, uh, oh, yeah, I gotta hold the bow and do that. And you know, lots of combinations. Um, here's another thing I want to do. Um, let's see. You give me a stick. It doesn't matter what uh, item you have, of course. So the order of your abilities that you put on will actually matter as well. So I want to blink this, and then I'll put a uh, leap as well. And then I'll put like a 50% modifier leap. So I'm going, so you see um, here, I put the blink first and then the leap. So you can already guess what order they're going to activate. Very cool. I teleported, and then I used the momentum from my leap to get two places and you can combine these of course you can't have um, the same ability twice but you get the point point. and uh, I guess here you can also have the same ability on different slots and then I'm going to clear this and then generate it again and you can see here <clears throat> I have my jump and here, and then if I have it in my um, offhand, let's go ahead and bind my offhand abilities as well. Let's do uh, one, two, three. I can also do that too. Pretty cool. So yeah, this sword, this this stick can be used in the offhand and the main hand. Very very robust system. But then I'd just be uh, complimenting myself there. So here's the Aethel tags. Uh, so basically, if you put a tag on this, the Aethel item tag category, it'll basically put it into its own category. Pretty self-explanatory uh, when you save it. And Forge category, same way. And Forge ID, I demonstrated. So that's the uh, item editor.